Welcome to BergKnifeMaking.com, making a knife the complete build. Now today we're going to take a look at building this particular knife. This is a AEBL stainless steel knife, acid etched, and it has um, segmented hybrid scales made out of bur uh, burlap, micarta, and blackwood. This particular show is a little bit long because I'm going to cover the entire build and, and try to show every step involved in the knife making process. Now this is a commission piece for a customer. I started with one of my standard uh, universal stainless blanks and I'm just going to modify it uh, to the customer's uh, design or profile. He wanted a, a drop point um, and very simple, I just basically drew out the modifications with a black magic marker. Uh, and then I just went over to my 2x72 grinder uh, and started to grind the profile. Now this is a, a Origin Blade Maker 2x72, uh, 2 horsepower, variable speed. Uh, can't emphasize enough how important it is to have a really you know, decent grinder uh, to work with. It just makes the whole knife making process just so much easier. And be before I get too involved in this particular show, uh, let me just remind you that I, I did start a new segment, um, Tricks and Trade of Knife Making, and that will be uh, at the very end of this, uh, of this video. So make sure you watch to the end. So I just use a round file in order to create the coil notch. This will be where the, the start of the bevel is. And then I'm going to ream the, the pre-existing holes uh, through the handle uh, for the pin holes and then in addition to that I will also drill some additional holes and these are just lightning holes. I use a size F for quarter inch pins. This is one size uh, larger so that you get an easy fit. If you notice that I've got a clamp on my drill press table so that if this um, blade or blank were to catch and try to spin, it wouldn't be able to spin in helicopter on me. I'm also going to use a chamfering tool uh, just to chamfer each one of those holes uh, to get rid of the burr. This makes it really easy to get the pins in later and it prevents uh, you know, any high spots that would you know, cause your handles not to sit flat. Now I have a uh, surface grinding attachment for the 2x72. This is a fantastic attachment. Uh, so actually before each build, um, I just really quickly uh, surface grind both surfaces just to make sure that they're nice and clean and flat. And then I'll repeat that process after heat treating. Now, the whole heart of knife building uh, is, is the bevels. I start by dicoming uh, the edges and then I scribe two parallel lines called railroad track lines. I'm going to use those lines as a visual guide while I'm grinding the bevels. Now I use a tilt table uh, tool rest or jig. This is a, a device that Jason Northgard and I developed. Uh, we actually manufacture these and sell them also. But they mount uh, onto any standard inch and a half tooling arm and will then fit into any uh, 2x72 grinder uh, that will accept uh, tooling arms, an additional tooling arm. The tilt table holds the blank at the correct angle, whatever angle you, you decide for that particular knife. It depends on how wide you want the bevel to be. And then you just move the blank up into contact with the belt and then across. Now I'm just grinding the rough bevels here. So on a small knife like this, I'll use a coarse grit belt. This is a 60. If the knife was really big and I really wanted to move a lot of material fast, uh, sometimes I use a 36. The coarse grit belts move material faster and they create less heat than the fine grit belts do. I've got a quench tank next to the uh, 2x72 on a raised platform so I don't have to bend over to quench the blade. And the whole time I'm working on these bevels, I'm really just watching those center scribe lines. And I'm just carefully grinding so that the entire bevel matches up with that particular line. If you do that, the bevel will actually follow the profile of the blade. And you'll end up with nice even bevels on both sides. 
So I finished the rough bevels on one side. I'm just going to flip the blade and, and do the exact same thing on the other side. And what's really kind of neat about the tilt table is that I will then leave it set in this at that angle. Um, and then after heat treating, the, the post heat treating cleanup is very, very easy because the angle is already set. It's just another look at those. If you look real close, you can see the scribe lines right on the edge of the blank. And then I'm just carefully grinding so that it's uniform grind right along the edge of that scribe line. And I think aside from the, the purchase of a really good 2x72 grinder, um, the, the tilt table has made the biggest uh, improvement in the quality of the knives that I'm able to create. Because for, at least for me, it, it's no longer a struggle to create really nice bevels. So while I was working on the blanks, or just before, I was working on the bevels. Um, I laid up some burlap micarta. This is my micarta press. It's just a couple of cut four by fours and a couple of pieces of pine and some clamps. I wrap it in um, parchment paper. And I've done videos on, on creating micarta. Um, the customer wanted burlap micarta. And instead of just using full sheets of burlap, I cut small pieces. So it's gonna be a very interesting little patchwork burlap micarta. And I'm going to combine these uh, at almost like a, a segmented scale with some African blackwood. Uh, so before I go to heat treating, I do want to use my, my touch mark stamp. So my touch mark is on there. This blank is ready to go for heat treating. Now this is a stainless steel blank. So this is going to get wrapped in stainless tool wrap, create an, uh, as airtight of an envelope as possible by double folding each one of the seams um, and really creasing each one of those folds. You do that um, on the main seam and then also on both sides. And you try to create an airtight envelope. Be very careful when you work with this stuff. It is razor sharp. It will sli literally slice you up. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole heat treating process here, but basically I put it into an even heat oven, uh, 1950 degrees um, for 15 minutes. I take it out, I plate quench it, clamp it between two plates, um, blow air over it to, to cool it off fairly quickly. It then goes in for a sub-zero quench and dry ice. Um, and then after that, it goes in for two tempering cycles in an oven, uh, I think it's 395 for two hours each cycle and you let them cool uh, slowly overnight without opening the oven door. The post heat treat cleanup starts right back on uh, the surface grinding, uh, the surface grinding attachment. So I'm gonna now um, surface grind at 120 grit and it's not, a, it's not a deep surface grinding, I'm just cleaning up the surface. Just a couple of passes. Cleaning up the bevels is done, as I said before, uh, back on the 2x72 and back onto the tilt table. Now because the angle is already set, the cleanup is pretty easy. The original bevels were done with a 60 grit belt. Uh, now I'm going to go um, over them with an 80 or clean them up with an 80 and then I'll make another pass with 120 grit. And then depending on what your desire is with the knife, you can leave it at that, uh, or you can choose to polish to a higher grit. So both bevels are cleaned up, both flats are cleaned up. For this particular knife, the customer wanted an acid etched finish. Um, I'm not a real big fan, uh, a fan of hand sanding, but um, I decided to clean up uh, the grind lines on this particular blank. Um, I just think it looks better with an acid edged finish.
Now these are the scales that I made up. So I combined that um, burlap micarta with African blackwood. I used some black and white liners uh, in between. And the mounting process, I'm going, because this, this knife is going to be acid etched, I want to have removable pins. Um, so I, I want to be able to, you, normally I attach my, my scales and then I grind the profile of the scales right down to match the blade. If I did that on an acid etch blade, I would actually grind away the acid etching from uh, the edge of the blank. So I'm going to do it a little bit different. What I did was I lined up an oversized scale exactly where I wanted it, clamped it in position, and drilled the first hole. Again, size F drill bit for quarter inch pins. I'm going to temporarily put a pin, a stainless steel quarter inch pin in the first hole, then I'm going to move over. Notice I moved my backing board a little bit so that I'm not, I'm drilling into a fresh surface so I don't have any blowout out the back of the scale. And I've also got my drill press clamp into position so that this blank can't catch and spin. So for each hole that I drill, I will then add a pin for stability before moving on to the next hole. This particular knife has three pin holes in each uh, side of the scales. And because these are, are bolstered or, or segmented scales, you really have to uh, be able to drill these holes and also line up that segmented scale perfectly. So what I did was, at this point, I just used painter's tape. I lined up the liners on the top and on the bottom perfectly. And then I, I firmly taped them together so that there's no, no movement at all. And then I used those holes on the first half of the scales as my drill guide. I very carefully lined up the drill with each one of those holes. And then I'm drilled right through the second half of the scales. Notice my backing board is still in place. My clamp is still in place. And for each hole that I drill, I still then add a pen for stability. I just don't want any chance of it moving. And what this is going to do is it's going to assure that uh, the finished product, those liners are going to perfectly line up. They're not going to be out of place. I am going to use a black magic marker and just line up the, the blank on the top of the scale and just draw out exactly what the outline is. Just going to make it easier when I profile these uh, scales after they've been um, attached to the blank. Just a visual reference. I, I could then use a bandsaw to cut off big pieces or I can just use the grinder. I do want to finish the front edge of the scales. So uh, black, African blackwood is a very, very hard wood. I, used, um, I actually used a 60 grit uh, belt on this to shape it. Uh, then I went to an 80 and a 240 um, and a 600. Um, and then I went to a felt buffing uh, belt with some compound and polished the front edge of each of those blanks. And I, if you notice, I have also taped them together and the pins are in place when I was doing that. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to add the counter bore. So this is a slightly larger size drill bit. The diameter is dependent on the, the head diameter of whatever cap screw you're going to use. And the depth is set on the drill press so that this drill bit does not go all of the way through. I'll show you in a minute. If you look into each one of those holes, you'll see a little edge where that drill stopped. That's what the, the uh, surface of the cap screw is going to rest on when you adhere these scales to the blank. I use these threaded inserts, and these inserts are slightly longer than the width of the blade. They stick through. So they will hold on that quarter inch drill size. They will hold the blank or the scale firmly, and then this, the cap screws thread into those and just pull you know, both sides against each, each other. So it's a, it's a really nice tight fit. So the, at first what I do is I attach both 
sides of the scales to the blank and I just profile that scale material. Again, I'm doing this with a coarse grit belt. Probably, I think this was a, a 60. Might have, might have been a, a 36. I, I just, I don't remember. And you can let that belt overhang either the left or the right hand side of the platen. That gives you the ability to uh, grind a little of those inside curves. This is not, you know, I'm not finishing the profile here. I'm just roughing it out. I'm getting rid of a lot of that excess material. You start to understand how many steps there is uh, to making a finished knife. Uh, now I'm going to switch from horizontal to vertical. So I'm going to uh, get rid of the, the 60 grit belt. I'm going to go to an 80 um, and then a 120. And I'm going to get rid of all of the previous grind lines. So once I go horizontal, you want to clean it up and get rid of all of those. Uh, sorry, once I go vertical, you want to get rid of all of the horizontal grind lines. Do that on the butt end, and I'll also, you know, start working on the inner curves. I can do that on the uh, small contact wheels on the on the flat platen. I can do it with a uh, a small wheel attachment, and then on the flat platen, I actually uh, start to shape the scales. However, however you would normally do scales, um, this way works for me. I understand that I am taking a, a huge risk because if I touch the blade uh, to the belt at all here, I really have the, the chance of, of ruining the project. So far, not wood, that hasn't happened. I, I keep a real close eye on where the blade is. I also use that bottom contact wheel uh, to create some of those um, contours on the inside of the handles. I'm just starting to carve them. And then I'll use a sander and I'll hand sand to smooth out all of the of the rough or the the rough edges. So hand sanding, you know, usually you know, starting in the 220 grit range, uh, you know, going going 600, 1200, and uh, 1500. For most times when you want to polish knife scales, you really have to get up into the 1500 or 2000 range um, and get rid of all of the previous uh, grind or scratch marks. Um, it just makes polishing just so much easier if you spend a few minutes hand sanding. Now I, po I actually polish uh, a lot of the, of the flat surfaces right on a, on a buffing uh, belt on the 2x72, but I also go to a buffing wheel uh, with compound and a very, very light touch just to polish the scales. I'm going to acid etch this uh, blank in ferrous chloride, do it a couple of dips. I left it in for, for probably five minutes or so. Really doesn't take too long. Now, this is the section I was telling you about before. It's called Tricks of the Trade. Uh, it's a short section. Um, and what I'd like to do is just cover different topics in this particular section. Today's topic is going to be how to create swooping uh, bevel plunge lines. So normally, for a flat or straight plunge line, you would have the belt of the 2x72 lined up perfectly with the edge of the flat platen. You would move the blank straight up into that um, and then work on creating your bevels. And that would create a nice straight plunge line. In order to create the swooping or curved plunge lines, you're going to move the belt so it overhangs the side of the flat platen. Do a little mark there where the flat platen is, just as a visual guide. So you over, overhang it an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch. Overhanging it, um, creates a softer um, curve and then instead of going straight with the knife you're going to hold it on, a, on an angle and the combination of the two is really what what generates that swooping plunge line you'll see in a minute
So there's the swooping line that I was talking about. See how it just angles up and then merges in with the softer curve created by overhanging the belt. Another tip for this, I, I did it originally, I think with an 80 grit belt. Um, I always try to finish it off with 120 uh, belt on a, on a felt backing. So it's a felt backed belt. It's a little bit softer, it gets into the curves a little bit more, and it really, really polishes up or finishes uh, these uh, swooping plunge lines very, very nicely. So that's a quick trick of the trade for creating a swooping or slooping or curved uh, plunge lines on your bevels. Back to the show, uh, the handles or the scales are completed and it's really now just the final assembly. I've taken the blank out of the acid, I've neutralized it. I'm gonna use uh, new cap screws. Uh, these, these are black, you can also get them in stainless, but I've cleaned out all of the compound from each one of the holes. Screw those nice and, and tightly together. And then this knife really just has to get sharpened, and then it's finished. So here's some images of, of this project. This is, a, again, a AEBL stainless steel knife, uh, acid etched patina. It's got a combination of African blackwood and burlap micarta scales. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I would absolutely love it if you took a minute and, and added a comment uh, to the YouTube channel. Uh, by all means, join us uh, on our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. Uh, and if you're interested, please check out the how-to knife making book that Jason Northgard and I put out last year called Introduction to Knife Making. And that can be found on my website, bergknifemaking.com, uh, or you can find it on amazon.com. Thank you very much.